Hello and welcome to the Comlex board review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional lectures, videos, podcasts, and much more information on how to prepare for the Comlex as you get ready for levels 1, 2, or Comlex 3. Let's take a look at this question. A 35-year-old female, 39 weeks pregnant, comes to your office with increasing dyspnea. No prior history of any major medical conditions. This is her first pregnancy. JVP is 13. Diffuse apical impulse is heard. And apical systolic murmur is heard as well. Now there's an S3 and an S4 sound present along with crackles and an EKG shows tachycardia. What is your diagnosis here? Is it severe aortic stenosis? Well, do we see signs of you know, syncope, tachycardia, and dyspnea? Maybe. Um, you know, there is dyspnea, there is a JVP elevation. Uh, do we see severe tricuspid regurgitation? Um, well, keep in mind, this is a apical systolic murmur. How about ASD, atrial septal defect? Well, we don't see any signs of wide splitting heart sounds. Um, and how about peripartum cardiomyopathy? The patient is 39 weeks pregnant. She has, you know, then S3 and S4 sound, tachycardia, JVP, apical systolic murmur, dyspnea. Um, this is a very interesting choice here. And what about pulmonary embolism? Well, patient does have tachycardia and dyspnea, but um, there's a lot more going on as well. Um, and, you know, the answer choice here would be peripartum cardiomyopathy. This is, um, you know, increasingly common African Americans, multiple gestations, women greater than 30 years of age. Okay, usually occurs during the last trimester of pregnancy or in the first six months postpartum most commonly diagnosed in the first postpartum month. 50% of women with peripartum cardiomyopathy will have improvement in left ventricular function within six months after delivery. Okay, so This is a very common condition that you should be aware of. In such cases, delivery is recommended. And unless obstetric reasons for C-section mode of delivery um, should be vaginal because of the lower hemodynamic burden. Okay. Um, because the risk of recurrence of pericardiomyopathy is common, repeated pregnancy is contraindicated. Patients with persistent left ventricular dysfunctions and patients with serious episodes should be counseled to avoid repeat pregnancy. Okay, so this is a very important point here. Delivery is recommended um, and mode of delivery most likely should be vaginal unless there's some clear obstetric conditions. And because of the risk of recurrence, um, generally, you know, repeated pregnancy is contraindicated. And so you should counsel your patient about, um, you know, repeat pregnancies. Again, let's take a look at certain medications that you should be aware of as you're taking the board exam. You don't want to give pregnant patients ACE inhibitors or ARBs during pregnancy, okay? Um, Again, keep in mind that digoxin and hydralazine are considered safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding. And diuretics can be used if symptoms are not controlled by uh, decreased salt and the CVP is elevated. Most experience with um, you know, thiazides and Lasix and diazides, keep in mind, impair uterine blood flow and uh, placental perfusion as well. Also, metoprolol, atenolol, labetalol, all beta blockers have been used safely in pregnancy, but fetal monitoring is recommended for IUGR and fetal bradycardia. Okay, so you know if you see an ACE or ARB on the test, that's going to be the wrong answer. Digoxin, hydralazine are good choices. Okay, um, diuretics are okay, and beta blockers certainly can be used, but you need to monitor um, the conditions for bradycardia or IUGR. Please visit ComlexFlashcards.com for additional high yield facts on the board exam. You'll find a lot more mnemonics, case vignettes, and other lectures to help you prepare for the board exam. Good luck in your preparation.